the Bible is oppressive, is a book of condemnation? Why would I believe in a God that makes me this way and then tells me I'm wrong? If you try to change me with this, it's not gonna work. This is my human nature. Said I wasn't gonna talk about it, but I can't keep it to myself. Oh. Hello guys, uh, my name is Stelian. Uh, I'm not here to put myself in the spotlight by the controversiality of this topic. I came to share my testimony, to share my, my spiritual journey, my encounter with God, and how I overcame homosexuality. I know this seems impossible and mm -hmm. crazy, but that's why I want you to, to stick around and just um, listen to, to my story. Great, so um, just to give you uh, just a clue about my background, I grew up in Romania, uh, in a small village, uh, mm -hmm. where I had a great childhood, honestly. I grew up in a, in a Catholic family, so I was going every single Sunday to church, but more of a culture and tradition. Uh, rather than there's something more spiritual. I've never really understood what's happening. As I was growing older, at the age of 13, I realized I have same-sex attractions. My, my attraction goes more towards same sex. I, I sense it's something weird. I sense something is, is not okay. But of course, I was young. I didn't know what's happening. Um, later on, I found out that, yeah, I'm, I'm homosexual, right? I found out that um, this is who I am if I have these attractions. Taking in consideration the fact that I was living in this small village, I knew that people see there's something wrong, that I can't get open here, so I can like hit everything. So I was pretending. It wasn't easy. <laughs> it wasn't easy to pretend all the time, to hang out with friends and everything, nobody know about you, and just pretend that everything is okay. But then, going on, on YouTube and seeing a lot of like coming out um, videos from, from different people, that yeah, yeah, I came out, I told my mom, I told my dad, I was like, oh wow, that's interesting. I think that if I do this, I'm gonna be happy too. Um, so, um, after I finished high school, I decided to actually move to, to London. Uh, but the reason for me really wanted to, to go away is because I just wanted to be free. I don't want to come like be constrained by any religious like doctrines, principles or anything else. But I wanted to go to a place where nobody knows my name. Um, and I can just really find freedom and happiness. Um, yeah, I just I just packed my stuff and um, yeah, flew to London. As soon as I arrived, um, I was filled with this powerful, enthusiastic feeling of like, wow, I'm, I'm in London. I was like, wow, that is my place. And um, from there, um, I tried to, to go deeper. I start exploring more. Not only London, um, which I loved, uh, mainly my, my sexuality, my desires. Um, so I start exploring, I start really discovering myself, engaging in um, different types of sexual encounters. Yeah, I thought, I thought it's, it's everything good. Like, it felt good at the beginning. It felt like, okay, I'm free. Like, it is nice. It's, I can connect with myself. And, and, and I went deeper in that. I found myself very depressed and lonely. And I didn't understand because London is such a big city. But I was so lonely and so empty and whenever I had this feeling of loneliness and depression and, and anxiety then I was, I was going out indulging in other things and other sexual encounters in order to kind of like suppress that feeling because I didn't like how I felt. But then of course I had a few moments of pleasure then getting back home and I was like, I felt horrible. I felt like wretched. I felt, um, yeah, empty. Um, really empty and um, I was hanging around with, with my, my friends in the LGBTQ community and I was, I was hanging around with them um, even though I was, I was many times like um, very sad but I've noticed it was very toxic because many times I felt bullied for not acting in a certain way for um, not being feminine enough and I was like confused I, was like, I don't understand and then um, I, was, I was very much hurt of, uh, of that as well so I kind of like isolated myself and um, I stopped hanging around, but I stopped focusing more on myself, on my personal growth, my career, my art as well, university, and um, it was it was good. Um, everything started to take a different shape, a different turn in my life. I discovered a new age spirituality, where um, I believed in universe. I believed in something higher all the time, so I, I consider myself agnostic. Just because I believed in, in a divinity doesn't mean like I believed in God. 
um, I was saying that you know, this divinity is universe. Um, so I, I, I was like um, doing meditation, um, I was uh, doing manifestation, um, and I was uh, kind of like spreading my desires in the universe. And funny enough, I was, I was receiving a lot of things that I desired. I was like, wow, the things are going better right now. But then it's interesting because even though everything was going so well, I ended up still feeling, feeling empty. It was like a crush. I had like breakdowns, so I was like, I don't understand. It was just me and my journal. <laughs> so I was journaling a lot, and uh, in my journal I was writing the fact that I don't, I don't understand what's happening. Like, my life goes well. I was like, my life goes well. I did this, I did this. Uh, I don't have anything to complain about. But still, I feel so empty. Still, it feels like I have no purpose. And then, because I had this, this kind of like deep um, feeling of a lack of purpose, it really just made me suicidal. And in that moment, I considered um, the thoughts of suicide many times. I just want to escape. Nothing makes sense. I was like, am I, am I homosexual? Am I, am I bisexual? Am I, um, you know, pansexual? I didn't know what's, what's happening in my life. The biggest question in my life, it was, who am I? This was driving me crazy. And um, I wrote this on my journal, I even remember right now, because it was such an intense time. And then it was October, the weather in London is not the, uh, the most welcoming in, in October. Yeah. It was windy, dark outside. And I remember I was writing on my journal, I was like, for the first time in my life, I need help. And I'm open in receiving it. I had no hope. I had nothing to hold on to anymore. And um, just in a few days, I received a message on Instagram um, of a group in my university, where they invited me to come to a discussion group. They told me it's really just about building great friendships, strong friendships, meeting real people and not giving into these kind of like superficial friendships and relationships anymore, but making a difference. Um, I didn't know much about it, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm by myself in, in my room. I don't do anything. I just pity myself. I just cry. I ended up um, going to this discussion. Everyone was super welcoming and, 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 and smiley. And um, I sat down and we started talking about self-esteem. Okay, cool. I already studied psychology, so I like this topic. We had some questions we answered to what we believe self-esteem is. And then uh, the, the funny part, <laughs> the leader of the discussion said, Okay, let us see what the Bible says about this. And I was like, what? My, my thought in that moment, it went straight to, to judgment. I was like, what? I don't like religion. In my head, I was like, religion is toxic, the Bible is oppressive, it's a book of condemnation. Many people on the street that preached, oh, you go to hell for being homosexual. Of course, I was against. But in that moment, because I started judging these people, I was like, wait a second, instead of being so judging towards these people, let me just be curious, why these young people believe in, in an old book? Yeah, in that moment, I just opened myself, I was like, okay, let me see. I laid back, I was like, okay, show me. They shared some, some principles from the Bible, uh, which were good values, still not very interested. In the end of the discussion, um, the, the leader came to me and asked me if I, um, if I believe or anything. I was like, no, nope. uh, I'm agnostic, I believe in universe, all of these things, but not God, not Bible. And he was asking me why, and um, because he said he would build real friendships and connections, I was like, okay, let me just be real then. <laughs> and I said, oh, I don't believe because I'm a homosexual, so why would I believe in a God that makes me this way and then tells me I'm wrong. It does not make sense. What was interesting is the fact that he was so compassionate and he didn't defend himself of the things that I was saying, but in fact he was asking questions. He was asking questions about, about me, about uh, my life, how did I realize that I have same-sex attractions. And really just, I saw like he genuinely listened. I was like, wow, I've never, I've never met a Christian that is not sending me to hell for telling him, you know, like I'm, I'm a homosexual. But um, this kind of like drew me in, I was like, okay, I could see guys who are happy, um, smiley, welcoming, genuine as people. And he helped me see that he's a real person, that's true. But then in the end, after we talked um, and we went deep into conversation, he asked me, would you be down in, in looking into the Bible? And um, I was so ready to say no, but in that moment I was like, you know what? Like, I grew up as a Catholic, 
I've never believed, I've never, I've never read. So how can I say you're wrong if I don't look into the source? You know what? Why not? I don't have anything to lose. Already my life was, was a mess. Um, so I start meeting um, and, and looking into the Bible. He was showing me principles, values in the Bible. But he told me that it's okay if I don't believe. What I need to do is really put the Bible in practice and see if it works. Right? And of course, I was very prideful, you know, I was very arrogant and I told them, guys, if you try to change me with this, it's not going to work. This is my human nature. You can't change me with a book. They were very understanding. They were very patient. Like, yeah, it's fine. We just look into the Bible. So we continue with the Bible studies. And then, of course, as I said, the Bible is, is a practical book. So I start putting it in practice to see if I find any benefit in my life. And um, me doing my reading it every day in the morning and then praying, I've seen that after one week, even though I did not even believe in God or anything else, I was so skeptical, I've seen that I'm oh, way happier. I was like, wait a second, I wasn't depressed this week. <laughs> I couldn't perceive the fact that a 2000 years old book has such an impact on me nowadays. And knowing that before I was reading self-development books, philosophical books, psychological books, and so many other books, and none of them had such a great impact as the Bible had, and I was like, what? It does not make sense. In that moment, um, I told myself, wow, this must be a supernatural book, something there. For the first time, I acknowledged the fact that there might be a God. And then um, I was more curious now to know more about these things. Of course, I was going further with the studies, um, with getting to know genuinely what the Bible says. And I just realized actually the Bible is a book of love. It's not a book of condemnation as I thought. It's a book of, of teaching you how to, to build a relationship with God. And therefore to build a relationship with the people around you as well. Seeing that, that I improve in so many things, I was like, wow, this has an impact on my life. This, uh, this changed me in a tiny way. But then that moment I switched and I was like, oh, no, 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 I think I'm brainwashed. I think I'm brainwashed by the Bible. I don't think this is okay. But in that moment, I was like, let me just do this. Make pros and cons. See, since I start going on this spiritual journey, did my life become better or worse, right? And doing this, I've noticed that there are more pros than cons. I, I barely found cons. Like, I was happier. I was genuinely happier. I've seen an improvement. I've seen something spiritual happening. And then uh, seeing that, I was like, okay, I want to believe in God, but I'm just too skeptical. And I was just rejecting it and rejecting it. And one day I was stuck in, in one place. I couldn't go further with the studies, but I couldn't go back either with the studies. Because like, I found out so much true that happened in my life. I can't just go back now to my own life and be miserable. I can't go further if I don't believe in a God, you know? Um, and in that moment, like I prayed and I said, God, if you're really there, Give me a sign. I do want to believe in you, but I just can't believe in you. It's just something stopping me. It's, it's just the skepticism, the doubt that I had in my head, the rationality, right? It didn't allow me to believe in a God. So I prayed and I remember I had such a burden here in my chest. And then um, a few days later, I was in university and I was trying to work on my essay, but I couldn't concentrate at all. I was like, my mind was in so many places because there was so much happening in this period. But in that moment, trying to focus and seeing that I, I, I'm not able to, I looked down and I said, like, I'm shaking, you know, my, my hands are just like shaking. I was like, what, what's, what's happening? You know, but I didn't even have time to think of what's happening or to rationalize the, the, the moment. But in that moment, like, I felt such an overwhelming pressure upon my chest uh, that made me fulfilled, made me happy. Like, I just lifted my head and I said, I believe. I said, I believe for the first time in my life, the emptiness that I've had and I tried to fill it with so many things, running, chasing money, chasing love, chasing relationships, chasing education, chasing validation, um, you know, chasing all of these things and not, not being able to fill this, this hole, right? But for the first time, this hole was filled. And in that moment, I was like, I know it's true. I know it's God. Uh, I have no doubt anymore. And just because I was so happy in that moment, I said, you know what? My whole life, my whole old life is just done. That's it. That's not who I am. That's, I don't need anything of that kind. So in that moment, I gave up homosexuality. I gave up all my dreams of being successful and having money and being famous, you know? All of this superficial dream. I've seen that God created me so simple. 
and I was complicating my life with all of these identities, all of these layers from society, trying to be like, I'm homosexual, put it on me, no, no, I'm pansexual, I don't know, asexual. Um, and I was so confused, but in that moment I realized, wait a second, that's not my identity. Just because I'm attracted to the same sex person doesn't mean like that's my identity, right? Because identity is who you are. You actually have an essence there. We're like spiritual people, like humans. We're spiritual humans. We're not, um, you know, just flesh, just, just appearance, just bodies. But we're more than that. And we have a soul, right? Uh, and in that moment, I realized um, that I was complicating my life with all of these layers from society. And um, it felt like God grabbed me in that moment and took me to the beginning of the world and everything to show me, look, this is this is what I made you for. And this is how much you've just drifted away from. And I was like, Phew, that's crazy. It was mind blowing because in that moment I was like, I've seen it. There was the pivotal, pivotal time of my spiritual journey in which I gave up everything that I ever was before because all I had in that moment was enough. The fact that I had God, the, the fact that, that Jesus and his example came into my life in such a way that I thought is impossible. It just changed me. And um, I took the decision to change my whole life. I messaged the guys, I was like, guys, I understand your devotion for God. I understand why you believe in God and uh, why you believe in the Bible. I just want to change. I want to go through the Bible studies and get to know more about God. Um, and so it happened. Um, I persevered. I uh, had to give up a lot of things in my life. I mean, give up everything. <laughs> I gave up honestly everything, everything. Um, even my house. I moved with uh, with the guys. Like I, I was filled with joy. It's been one year and eight months so far since I leave this lifestyle. Since I leave, not according to me, not according to what I want. Because if I go back and remember how I how I was controlling my life, it was quite messy. But now allowing allowing God to control my life, it's it's so easy. It's, it's way easier. Um, I've never had suicidal thoughts anymore because I have a purpose. I have really a purpose to have an impact on people um, and to really just do great things. God's plans are my purpose now. Uh, if you think that to give up homosexuality is impossible, well, let me tell you that, that God can do the impossible possible. I doubt it so much, but here I am right now and I cannot deny it. Uh, and this is the reason for me standing here and uh, talking to you and just really sharing vulnerably what I've been through and where I am right now. I don't have anything anymore to hide. Um, that's who I am. Um, if you do have more questions, please ask me in private on social media or um, just down below in the comments. If you want to study the Bible, get to know what I experienced, go on this spiritual journey, please message me. I'm an open book. Thank you so much guys for uh, watching this video. It means a lot for me. Um, and I hope that, that somehow my story could help you. Um, I leave you now. Goodbye. Nice.